Welcome to Worship Night at the Cabin number 35. This session, five ways to keep a positive point of view. Five ways. And that's what we want, a positive point of view, especially in these times that we're in. You know, a Christian author C.S. Lewis once said that only humans uh, can have the ability to imagine the future. There's no other creature that, that has the ability, except for humans, to imagine the future. All other creatures, they just go by God-given instinct, and they live in the moment, basically. For example, uh, you know, a bear by instinct knows when to hibernate, and a bird knows when to migrate, and owls just know by instinct uh, to hunt at night. Uh, but only a human can plan and reason and make decisions uh, about the future. Now, we can't foresee what the future holds. Only God can do that, but we can imagine uh, what will or could happen. And so we, we kind of plan around that and make decisions on how we might act. Now, since humans have the ability to imagine the future, there's basically just three uh, scenarios, different views about the future. One is a positive view. One's a neutral view. One's a negative view. Now, negative uh, would be an idea the future is dim and, and uh, filled with disappointment and failure. A neutral view is, well, you don't really care what happens. Kind of indifferent. But a positive view means uh, we expect that good things are going to happen in the future. And that positive view is called hope. And as Christians, we have hope. Now, a non-believer's idea of hope, though, when you think about it, uh, it's much different than a Christian's definition of hope. A non-believer will see hope as just a positive outcome of some future event or situation, either by chance or by effort or by personal skill. For example, Winning a card game is hope for them. Buying a new car, uh, getting a better test score, uh, that's kind of hope. But a Christian's definition of hope is a lot different. And the fact is, and the difference is, it involves God. A Christian's view of hope involves, always involves God. So for a Christian, hope can be defined as a confident expectation that for some future situation or condition, uh, it will turn out favorably, favorably, based on faith, based on faith that God will intervene. His providence, his interaction with us, his promises will be true. So, for a Christian, God is involved in the future. Because of faith, we have a confident hope, a confident hope in the future. Because we know God is going to be in control. There's a great scripture that talks about this confident hope, and it's found in Ephesians 1.18. And here's the scripture. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. So confident hope. Now this confident hope is found in faith in Jesus. That's how we have confident hope. And if we're in Christ and he's in us, then this hope can't be ever taken away from us, this confident hope. So the question is, what's this hope look like? What's this confident hope look like? Well, 
it turns into a positive point of view, positive perspective. So I'm going to give you five ways we can maintain a positive point of view, especially in these times when there's a lot of negative going on and we have the coronavirus and there's lockdowns and masks and, and the fear of getting the virus and uh, life not normal anymore. So there's a lot of fear and confusion and frustration. So to get a positive point of view and, and, and turn away from the negative is really important. So here's five ways. Number one, realize that our current circumstance will pass. Now, my mother always had this saying, uh, and I'll never forget it because she's said it so many times, and here's the saying, this too shall pass. This too shall pass. And that saying that represents a positive perspective doesn't mean to deny reality. It just means that we acknowledge that even in the toughest circumstances, there's a way through them. There's, there's an outcome that, that we can uh, get it behind us. So number one, realize that our current circumstances will pass. This too shall pass. Second way to keep a positive point of view is realize that God is with us through it. We don't go through these circumstances alone. God will never leave us or forsake us. Jesus said, I will be with you until the end of the age. And he has a spirit in us. So we're never alone going through things. And that helps us to, to stay positive, knowing that God is with us through things. Number three, realize that God is constantly working for us. He works in our favor. I've, I've said this verse before, Romans 8, 28, and hope, hopefully by now you've memorized Romans 8, 28. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So God works for the good of those who love him. He works in our favor. He's the perfect father. We're the child of God. So we're in this loving child, father relationship. And as a perfect dad, he wants the best for us. And even though we might go through hard times, he's trying to work things out in our favor all the time. So that's number three. Number four is realize that God can do the impossible. What seems to us might be an impossible situation. To God, it's possible. He can do all things. Luke 18, verse 27, Jesus is talking and he says, what is impossible with man is possible with God. What is impossible with man is possible with God. Number five, realize that God hears our prayers. God considers everything we ask. Now, uh, will he answer everything in a positive? Who knows what his answer is, but at least... We know he considers our request. And then through his wisdom, his control, he decides how to answer it. But he listens to it. And that's, and that's good enough for me. If I know that God hears my request and then I leave it up to him, that's, that's fine. But God uh, hears our prayers. And Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Pray. So to summarize, 
Five ways to keep a positive point of view. Number one, realize that our current circumstances will pass. Number two, realize that God is with us through, through this. Number three, realize that God is constantly working in our favor and doing what is best for us. Number four, realize that God can do the impossible. And number five, realize that God hears our prayers. Well, that we can keep a positive point of view, knowing that God is in the picture. The bottom line is this, as Christians, we have hope. We have hope, a confident hope, because of faith, of faith. Now, what, what is faith? Well, faith, uh, according to Hebrews 11.1, uh, is, is kind of a good description of it. it. says this, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we cannot see. Being sure of what we hope for and convinced, confident of what we can't see. Faith. So, uh, faith is so important to, to a Christian that brings us hope. How do we get faith? Well, Romans uh, ten seventeen. Uh, just got a text there. Okay, Romans ten seventeen says faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news about Christ. In other words, we want more faith. Read the Bible. The New Testament especially, and you'll get you'll gain more more faith and more belief. But you know, faith is is a real time thing. It's a real act of working trust. If you want to look at faith, it's a real act of working trust in God, and this trust uh, brings uh, and affects our outlook and our action. So this, tr uh, this trust in God is so much that it affects our faith and our, our action uh, and our outlook. So a faith brings confident hope. The more faith we have in God, the more our hope is solidified. Our hope increases. So remember, because of faith, we have this confident hope and this hope goes beyond this world. I mean, it goes uh, to heaven eternally. And, and our, our hope is not just in God working in our life. Our, our hope is our reward. We know the end of the story. We know that in the end we resurrect because Jesus resurrected and we have eternal life in heaven with him. So that, that's always, the victory is always there because of the cross that Jesus died and forgave us of all our sins so uh, this hope goes way beyond this world it's the promise of heaven there's an old old song in many of the hymn books i remember it it's called this world is not my home and the first uh, verse is this this world is not my home i'm just a passing through my treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue the angels beckon me from heaven's open door and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. <laughs> so that's, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. I'm, I'm not just passing through. Uh, I'm uh, just a passing through. I'm just a passing through. One more thing. Remember, because of faith, we have confident hope. And confident hope results in peace confident hope results in peace so gain more faith get more hope a positive view and all that results in peace who doesn't want peace <laughs> so that scripture i read at the beginning ephesians 1 18 i pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called. Those five things. Realize our current circumstances will pass. Realize that God is with us through this. Realize that God is constantly working in our favor. Realize that God can do the impossible. And realize that God hears our prayers in tough times. We need God. We need each other. 
You know, we, we can't make it on our own. It's hard to make it on our own. As Christians, we need others around. And in these times, it's tough to be around other people. Uh, do the best we can through text calls, phone calls. We don't restrict phone calls. And so we can do that. We can try to uh, email, text, phone, do what we can to still connect. We need that. There's a, there's a song I wrote that I want to share. One of my songs called I Cannot Make It On My Own. That's the title. And, it, and um, you know, it's the truth. I cannot make it on my own. Or I cannot make it on my own. And you might echo the same thing. It goes like this. tried my best to do things my way but I must confess I fail every day cause when I'm in control instead of you Lord disaster comes knocking at my door well I need you Lord to carry my load Lead me down this road I must admit If the truth be told I cannot make it On my own So lead me Jesus Trust in you, you're the only one who can get me through. Cause I'm totally dependent on your loving grace, for your mercy and goodness. I'm pleading my case. I need you, Lord, to carry my load, take my hand. Lead me down this road I must admit If the truth be told I cannot make it On my own So listen to my prayer Listen to my cry Listen to my call Then I will survive Listen to my plea Listen to my side I know you'll rescue me So I give you my life My life Oh, I need you, Lord To carry my load Take my hand Lead me down this road I must admit If the truth be told I cannot make it, I cannot make it, I cannot make it on my own. And that's the truth. So remember, keep a positive point of view. Because of faith, we can have a confident hope. And that results in peace. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for, first of all, the Bible, the truth, that we can gain faith by hearing your word. Help us apply that faith and trust in you. And we know that we can have confident hope that can't be taken away from us. And because of our hope, you've given us peace. So we praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So until next time, Arrivederci.